Whew. It is a beautiful Sunday evening here. And let me tell you, everybody, it's been it's been a long week. It's been a long week for me and for everybody else. So glad at least for some like myself, I get a three day weekend. And tonight it is a beautiful night to talk some basketball, the NBA All Star Game, the actual All Star Game. Is going on currently, so figure it it be it be, it be the best time to talk about you know some college basketball, some NBA, you know things that have been going on since you know K day, and well, both the men's and women's top sixteen, you know the top 16's projected seeds as revealed by the committee. Now the women's was revealed on. Or rather, they made it on Valentine's Day. The men's they made on Friday, and revealed it Saturday morning. And now, women's I had to look up, but the men's I watched the bracket reveal at least the bracket preview part. You know, anyway, and I gotta say, uh, um, you know, after today uh, with Purdue losing to Ohio State, you know. Yesterday, UConn beating Marquette, you know, and some other results, you know, sticking like Wisconsin losing, uh, Auburn losing as well. You know, things are going to definitely change along these lines. And, you know, let, let's just get the elephant out the room. UConn will be the number one seed overall in the NCAA tournament. There's just, I don't think there's any doubt about it anymore. Uh, unless Houston has something to say about it. But honestly, you look at UConn, you look at that roster averaging, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, 10, 10 points a piece for five guys, four rebounds for each of them. Defense stifled Marquette yesterday. Just an absolute bloodbath yesterday. In a game that was highly anticipated, it was a top four matchup yesterday, and instead, yeah, that didn't, yeah, that didn't happen at all. You know, it was a blowout. And, you know, UConn, the thing about UConn is, yeah, you know, they lost, you know, early in the season to Purdue and everything like that. But, you know, that doesn't matter anymore. It's It was early in the season. You know, the whole body of work is going to matter at the end of the day. And, you know, the Big Ten, I just don't feel the Big Ten is as strong as the opportunities that UConn has left again. A very, very frustrating Ohio State team that just fired Chris Holtman. How do you lose to that team, Purdue? And, you know, people want to vilify and, and you know, and, and villainize Purdue and everything like that. But the simple fact of the matter is, is that the Big Ten is not very strong, and it hasn't been in quite some time. And I'm glad this year, you know, other conferences decided to step up and take away some of these bids that the Big Ten would probably get. Because you know, you know how the committee would do and put like eight or nine Big Ten teams when they do not deserve it. I'm glad the Big 12 is so strong, you know, as far as a conference goes. Yeah, the non conferences, you know, was absolutely nothing for most of the Big 12 teams, but, you know, in conference, they beat the brakes off of each other. Mountain West, same thing. That's why the whole, oh, well, we could get six bids from the Mountain West this year. That's why that's been a thing. And I think that's going to be a thing, to be completely honest. And I'm going to ask that question, too. Is there going to be a six-bid Mountain West? I personally think there can be, but I don't know. Um, there are a couple things about this bracket preview that I just do not really get. Um, again, you know, obviously things will change again, but first things first, Wisconsin being on, you know, the 16, you know, being the last four seed, I get they have the 11 quad one and quad two wins, but again, you know, the whole body of work is supposed to matter, and I just see this team completely falling off, and they've fallen completely apart over the last three weeks or so, losing like five out of their last six. I just don't get it. I don't get it. I think a team like Dayton, you know, would suffice here. 
you know, I, I just don't get it. North Carolina, you know, I, I'm kind of cool with the, like all the two seeds. I'm kind of cool with personally would have, you know, maybe Tennessee ahead, North Carolina, the three seeds. I'm actually kind of cool with two. I'd probably, but because of the way Iowa State's non conference schedule is, I can understand why they're back there. But again, they just beat the breaks off of Texas Tech today or rather yesterday. So I, I don't know. The bubble still, the bubble is actually kind of weak, in a sense. You know, the where it's just like, what, what is going on here? What is this? What is this bubble picture like? Ugh! Like you got a team like Villanova, you have got Seton Hall, St. John's from the Big East, um, Texas. You know, you know, still kind of floating around as like, a, a, like they're projecting Texas as like a ten seed now. You know, they flip flopped back and forth with the way they've been winning and losing games. But honestly, you know, my horns are probably going to be like a, I hope they're like a 10 seed. I just, I just can't fathom them being any higher than that. Um, Pac-12, absolute dumpster fire, aside from Arizona and Washington State. Yes, I said Washington State. Absolute dumpster fire of a conference beyond that. Um, SEC. Pretty, it's actually pretty strong, you know. Kentucky, you know, lost to Gonzaga, but they rebounded. They rebounded with again beating Auburn this week by, you know, keeping them contained because Auburn beat the brakes off of South Carolina earlier in the week. You know, I, I mean, it's all good. And South Carolina's a pretty good team themselves. Don't don't count out Alabama, Tennessee. Looking like they'll win the SEC to be honest with you. And then Ole Miss is like a team that really doesn't have any wins either, but yet they don't have very many losses, so you can't really put them anywhere aside from in the tournament. You can't really you can't really put them on the bubble because they don't have, you know, bad losses or anything because, the, you know, like all their losses are in conference play. So you have to put them in. Um, but, yeah, that's like six bids for the SEC. Um, big. Big Twelve is probably gonna get like nine or ten. Just, just being, just being real with you. Like, it, unless Oklahoma State or West Virginia somehow win the conference tournament, we're gonna get nine or ten Big Ten, Big Twelve teams in. Personally, think the Big Ten itself will have like six or seven, maybe a seven, you know, a seven seed. But you know, you got a solid lineup with Purdue, Illinois, Michigan State. Um, like those three right there, and then um, you know the rest of you know the, the Big Ten isn't really you know isn't really there's really nothing to slouch it or anything like it's fine but like I don't I don't know I don't I don't know uh, other teams like Memphis Indiana State they're gonna have to win their conference tournaments Florida Atlantic as well they just got beat by South Florida today. You know, in a game that wasn't close early, but you know, it got close very late and everything like that. So, you know, it, it's gonna be hard. You know, you know, North Carolina's playing some good basketball, Duke's playing some good basketball, Virginia's brand of basketball is very disgusting, but I mean it is what it is. I love how I love how you know the whole Kyle Filipowski thing just didn't even work out. It's just been other guys for Duke, but like um, R.J. Davis and Baco, you know, still doing their thing for North Carolina. I personally, think North Carolina will, will probably win the ACC and maybe ACC will get like four or five bids. I know, I know, some people are under rate or uh, you know keeping the ACC. You know, they're like gatekeeping the SEC, the ACC or whatever. You know, trying to say, oh, well, the ACC isn't very good. But when you have a team like Pitt or Wake Forest, you know, you know, kind of sneaking in there, you know, I personally think we're going to get four or five bids like North Carolina, Duke, Virginia, and maybe, you know, you know, one of these other teams that I've mentioned, like Clemson's fell off a little bit, you know, but ultimately I, I think, you know, there's going to be a way for them to get him, but like that top three, the top three in the ACC looks pretty solid right now. Looks pretty solid. Um, for the women, again, there's not much really that 
you know, has changed at the top, at the very, very top of South Carolina. We're talking just South Carolina here. They're still unbeaten. They had a scare against Georgia in the first half, but, you know, Cardoso, Don Saley, you know, corrected that in the second half. So South Carolina is still unbeaten. I believe they took in the SEC regular season title as well. So, you know, there's that. You know, that that was that was too easy for the Gamecocks. Um, but for everybody else, you know, we all know the story now. Caitlin Clark breaking the NCAA, you know, at least the sanctioned NCAA record surpassing Kelsey Plums, but she hasn't surpassed the other one you know, from, you know, way back in the day. Um, from what's her name? I forgot already because, you know, they were making so much of a big deal out of it, but, you know, you know, it, it, it betwixt this time, you know, from, you know, K-Day to now, I was lost the game to Ohio State, lost the game to Nebraska. Um, you know, and Ohio State has been rated very highly by the committee, which I, I'm actually kind of surprised that Colorado, you know, the entire Pac-12, at least the women's side, is very, very strong. We're talking Colorado, UCLA, USC, Oregon State, Stanford, such a shame that this will be the last year at the Pac-12. Such a shame. Because, I mean, that conference just gave us a thriller between Oregon State and UCLA at the very end. Um, you know, the Big 12, yes, yes, Oklahoma's technically, like, leading the conference right now. Let me go look at the standings again real quick in the Big 12 for women's side. But it's like, at the same time, you have... A Texas team that's just, you know, it's really, really strong. The Kansas State team, you know, they got destroyed by Texas about a week or two ago, but they're still kicking very strong. Um, you know, Baylor, West Virginia, they're kind of just, they're kind of just there. You know, right now they've been battling at the bottom of the AP top twenty-five. You know, those two teams specifically. Um, and then, yeah, that's about it, to be completely honest. Like, Oklahoma lost yesterday, too, so that kind of kind of put a dent in things. And then the ACC, absolutely loaded. North, North Carolina State, very good team. Louisville had to run through a gauntlet last week. They had to run through a gauntlet, you know, this week. Virginia Tech, Notre Dame, just... The ACC on the women's side is absolutely a nice conference to watch, too, um, what I can watch. It's Syracuse as well is climbing back up into things. So, uh, again, the SEC is all South Carolina's, you know, the Big East. It's going to come down to tomorrow with Creighton and UConn. It will come down to those two, but, you know, UConn um, – you know, they are, like, projected as a three, like one of the last three seeds. I believe they are the last three seed, you know, in the projections. But ultimately, you know, UConn, you know, Paige Beckers is coming back next year, so that's a good thing for them. They'll try and run it back next season and see if they can do something. They can see if they can do some damage. Um, but, yeah. So yeah, the big the big East will actually come down to Creighton, UConn, in my opinion. Uh, we all know that women's basketball still has the problem of parity. It's gotten better, but you know, this this year has shown us, you know, that it's gotten a lot better. But ultimately, I still think, you know, when these conference tournaments come around, I still think the top teams will dominate these conference tournaments. So we will see um a Big Ten final of like Indiana. Iowa, Ohio State, somewhere, one of those three. And, you know, we'll see a Big 12 final of Texas, Kansas State, Baylor, one of those. South Carolina will take on somebody, presumably LSU. Um, LSU doesn't really have, you know, the greatest, you know, pull to be in the top 16. I don't, I don't get why they're there. Same thing with Wisconsin on the men's side. I just don't get why LSU's there. 
on the women's side, I get it, but at the same time, I'm not. But whatever. So yeah, that's about it for that. There's not much else I can really say right now because you know we're getting close to the end of the season. You know, most of the ladies have played like 26 games. Most of the guys have played 26 games. So most teams have about five or six games, or rather about five, you know, three to five games left before conference championships, uh, especially on the women's side. They have like three to five games left, and then conference championships will come, um, you know, the week before the men's for most of the women. Um, in the NBA, eh, there's been some good games that I've watched. You know, um, the Warriors provided a couple of thrillers, you know, against the Suns, the Lakers. Um, that NBA triple header one day, like a couple weeks ago, didn't have Joel and B. Joel and B's been hurt. Thus, you know, he's not going to be eligible for the whole, you know, the whole MVP thing, which I don't really care about, to be completely honest with you. But I just, I just think it's kind of funny, you know, that they're putting the requirement in. Um, the Hornets, and I realize I spelt that Hornets. I don't know why I spelled it like that, but whatever. Um, you know, the Mavs traded away Grant Williams to the Hornets. There's some new pieces around Luka for the Mavs. You know, Kyrie's back and everything like that, but it's still Luka's show. I, and, I mean, personally, you know, it's going to it's gonna be one of those situations where it's like, you know, the Mavs still need the pieces, you know, the complete pieces around them. <laughs> And everything like that to be able to contend. But it's like at the same time, it's just it's just fun to watch Luka Doncic. You know, it's just fun. Really, really fun to watch him play. Um the Celtics, a balanced attack. That's why they're what 43 and 12 right now. The Timberwolves also very balanced. You know, they can beat you three different ways. And maybe Mike Conley too, but they could beat you. You know, Timberwolves can beat you three different ways with Cat, Gobert, and Ant. You know, the Celtics could beat you three different ways. Uh, Jalen Brown, you know, Porzingis, and Jason Tatum, of course. You know, sometimes Drew Holiday and, and Porzingis will show up, but you know, for the most part, yeah, you know, so and maybe Derek White too. Sometimes uh, the Knicks are really good. You know, they're not the class of the league just yet for me, but they're a really good team to watch with Jalen Brunson, the, you know, SGA and, and the Thunder. Really, really, really good, man. Really good team right there. Uh, LeBron and the Lakers are an interesting case, along with the Warriors. I know Draymond's back and everything like that, and I know that Draymond's been the center. You have, you know, the rest of the Warriors unit, which is actually a really solid unit. That's why they're still kind of hanging around above 500. Um, LeBron, I heard he wants to stay in L.A., but the Lakers have to start winning games in order for him to, in order for me to really believe that. Because, I mean, I just, I just can't see this Lakers team doing anything. You know, like they'll have a, one good night, and then the next one they'll have a night where they just completely, you know, poop the bed. You know, it's just it's just unfortunate for the Lakers right now. Um, I'd also say the Clippers are a very good team to watch. You know, again, another team that can beat you three or four different ways with Harden, Westbrook, Kawhi, and Paul George. I mean, just the Clippers are fun to watch. Clippers are fun. We'll be, hopefully we'll see more of them in the near future. But, man, 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 man. Um, I know Miami is probably not going to be back, you know, to where they are, to where they were last year, getting to the finals. I don't think they're going to get back to that level. But, you know, if we get, like, a championship of somehow, you know, the, you know, and I know, and I know it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be weird, you know, to say, you know that Denver might repeat, but I don't think they, they, they. There's there's a little bit of doubt starting to creep in for me that Denver, you know, isn't going to repeat. I don't think I don't think at this point. I don't I don't know if Denver's going to repeat at this point. 
uh, with the with the with the with the, uh, with the rest of the West. Excuse my voice there. With the rest of the West getting much much better, you know, um, the Thunder. You have to look out for them. The Timberwolves. You have to look out for them, and the Clippers. That that could be a really buzzsaw. We're gonna get some juicy stories, you know, if the Nuggets have to match up with any one of those three teams. It's going to be juicy to watch those four teams, really, in the grand scheme of things. So we're getting down to the wire in college basketball. We're still kind of, you know, finding our stride here with the NBA, but that's all in due time, everybody. That's all in due time. So tomorrow... It'll be time to talk some lacrosse. We'll come back to you after the PLL Championship Series has finished. Um, I do have some things to say about the PLL Championship Series. I do have some things to say about the NLL. You know, and, and of course, college lacrosse is in high gear, so I have some things to say there. And then, you know, later on, um, like sometime next weekend since... You know, it, it, it's about to be that time, so I'm trying to find a way to get another interview in. I don't, I don't know what in the world's going on. Uh, um, you know, Twitter is terrible for messaging people. Facebook Messenger is terrible for messaging people. Emails haven't been answered yet. You know, trying to get some of the guys from the arena lead to get on, but you know, it is what it is right now, so I'm just not even gonna worry about it and try again this week, which will combine perfectly with our arena indoor football update. It will combine with that perfectly because that Sunday is going to be a beautiful Sunday to talk all of that stuff. So can't wait for that. I will see you all throughout the week, starting tomorrow, and hope you have a good rest of your Sunday, and that'll do it. Peace. We're getting close to 250.